morning. Welcome to the Hosanna Fellowship Program. We're so glad that you've taken time to join us. We're here on Sunday mornings from 6.30 to 7 a.m. Uh, and, and, you know, over the last year, we've been actually talking about the fact that we believe lives and culture can be transformed by the proclamation of truth and love. And we know this, that truth is a person. Jesus said of himself that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one or no man, no one comes to the Father except through me. And also we know that God is love. And, and we know that God's love was made manifest to us in that Jesus came and died for us. And that's what we're here doing. We're proclaiming that reality and knowing that if a person puts their faith and trust in Jesus, their life can be changed. And if their life can be changed, their culture can be changed. And that's why we're here. That's what we've been discussing. That's what we've been talking about for the last year. And we're glad that you've taken time to join us. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to go back and look at previous episodes, you can do so. There's a, uh, you can go to our website at www.hosannafellowship.org, and there's a button there that you can touch that will take you back to all of the previous episodes on our YouTube channel. So it's a real pleasure today because we have a special guest with us. This is my friend Ehab Wilson, and Ehab is, uh, has been a tremendous blessing to my life and also to the church's life here at Hosanna. Uh, it's really uh, exciting because we've been in the midst of a, of a conference and, and uh, Ehab has been a part of that conference for the last seven years. And so we're really thankful for Ehab being with us. Ehab, welcome to uh, East Tennessee. Welcome to the Hosanna Fellowship Program. We're glad to have you. Well, thank you, Jeff. I'm so excited to be with you, uh, all of you this morning. And I'm sure that the Lord has, is going to speak to us in a very special way. So I'm looking forward to share my heart with you, Jeff. Thanks for this opportunity. Amen. Thank you. Well, I, Ehab, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, you know, uh, are you married? Do you have a family? And also, how did you come to Christ? Uh, okay. Uh, my name uh, is Ehab. I'm originally from Egypt. Uh, I am married to a Swiss uh, lady. Uh, she's named Pamela, and we have been married uh, since a long time. <laughs> it's a difficult <laughs> question. <laughs> we have three children. I have uh, two boys. Uh, Ellie is six and a half, Paolo and uh, Haya, the little girl. And uh, I used to live in United Arab Emirates for 15 uh, years, and uh, now we are living in Switzerland s since uh, two years. Wow. So now, wait a minute, people watching may not know, where is the United Arab Emirates? United Arab Emirates, it's part of from uh, the Middle East, which is called the Gulf region. Um, uh, Dubai, uh, it is one of the cities which is uh, having the tallest tower in the world, uh, which is called uh, Burj Khalifa. And uh, around the Gulf region, there is Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, Bahrain. And I think now it's become more familiar, supposed to be because of the black oil. Uh, they have it there. Yeah, it's an amazing city. I will say that it, it's a beautiful city, and it's it's a fairly new city. But but Ehab has uh, has been there for 15 years, and now where do you live? Now I'm living in Switzerland, so okay. in a city, in a small village, <laughs> part of from Neuchâtel Canton. Okay, yeah. and, and so tell me uh, a little bit how how did you come to Jesus? I mean, you were born Egyptian. How did you come to Christ? Actually, I uh, grew and I raised in a Catholic family. Uh, we used to go to the church uh, every Sunday uh, with my mother. And then I moved from a city, so I started to join an evangelical church. Uh, and I started to love the church more, being with the children and becoming more used, having more activity. But actually, this was not the main issue uh, for me to be an Orthodox or Catholic or Evangelical until someone he's met and he starts to speak to me about Jesus and why I have to be a follower of Jesus. And Jesus is not just a religious or not attending a church, but it's something that I miss it and I need it for my salvation. So he start to ask me, is Jesus, you have a special relation with him? Do you speak with him? Do you pray for him? Do you learning? Do you have a relationship with him? Do you know him as a person? Here is the start of my first uh, attract to uh, be asking more about the Christianity and how I can become a Christian. Wow, and so at what age did you surrender your life to Christ? Actually, I surrendered my life I, <laughs> two, three times. <laughs> but the most uh, powerful time, which really uh, I do remember it up to date when I was in university, 
uh, after one year of university, I was wanted to be cool. So I started to go to live my life as a teenager and I was not interested in Christ or a church or this stuff until I was in a summer vacation and I was in a prayer meeting. And in this prayer meeting, uh, it was a bit light, uh, uh, little light. And I started to, to pray and I do remember when I'm praying, I saw a vision, Jesus in the cross and he's told me, uh, this is for you, I love you. Mm -hmm. And I felt like how much he has been suffered in the cross and uh, he's want me to get out from my sin, my darkness, my uh, sadness. I was going through a very difficult time in my life which uh, I was feeling so much rejected and I just feeling that there is someone who loves me. I felt like why he loves me. And this love was unconditional and I do remember I was bowing down on my knee, weeping and crying for more than two or three hours just to ask the Lord to forgive me for my sin and I really wanted to have this person as in my life. I don't just want to hear about him but I want to feel him in every step of my life. And since the, this day, my life is totally changed and uh, we have been spending more than one and a half year every day night for overnight prayer from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. Was, was just a group of youth who was just loving Jesus every day reading the Bible during the day and who go for overnight prayer. Wow. So you're telling me that, that you had a dream, you had a vision, you, you saw the cross, and it was at that moment you realized God's great love for you and that he wanted you to be delivered from your sin and he wanted you to know what it meant to have new life in him. And that was the turning point. That was the, that was the, 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 the time when you said, Jesus, I want that. And, and, and for hours you were just <laughs> crying out, repenting. And, 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 and it was in that moment that there was a real transformation. And you've been walking with Jesus ever since. Yeah. This is, was absolutely the turning point of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, after this prayer, uh, I was walking, going back home. I was never uh, feeling the same heaviness which I was having. Yeah. I felt a uh, very deep peace in my heart. I felt uh, joy. I felt uh, for the first time in my life I'm accepted from my brother and sister, <laughs> who's more brothers at that time, but I felt like they loved me, they accepting me, and, uh, and uh, I was refreshed, and uh, I slept in very deep peace. I wake up next day, I hit what I'm doing, I'm just looking forward for the next prayer meetings they will do. So, yeah, there may be some people watching right now that have felt rejected. They felt isolated. They felt alone. They felt like they don't really have much of a purpose in life. And, and yet they've been around church. They've gone to Sunday school. They've done the vacation Bible schools. They've, they've been around Jesus, but they haven't really had this encounter with Christ you know, what would you say to them right now? I know that we're early into the program, but I felt like that there may be some people watching that really felt, felt impacted by what you said. I feel like the Lord is telling you enough. Come back. Uh, do not try too much stuff because I know that, and both of us know that you are not comfort. And I feel this is the moment to come back to your father, come back to his arms, come back to your place, come back to your address, which you will really feel loved, accepted, and Jesus is not condemning you. He just wants you to go and to bow down and to cry out to him, Oh, Lord, have mercy in me. And I feel that the Lord is going to restore you and he's going to give you hope. And whatever the enemy has stolen from your life, Jesus is merciful and he is going to give it to you back. Uh, how much is a, a lost son? He spent all what he has away with the sinners. But when he realized that the moment he needed to come back to his father, his father has given him everything back. He didn't hold it. And he felt, yes, this is my place. This is where I want to be. I encourage you to make even the decision right now, to bow down and to pray and to ask God to forgive you. As he's waiting, the forgiveness of God is already released from mm. you. You just need to receive it and to hold on it. And I believe that this is the moment that God is going to restore you. And you know what? He's going to make from your story a new story that everyone around you, when he will see you, he will be wondered about how Jesus has met you and changed totally your life in Jesus' mighty name. Wow, praise God. Amen. Maybe just lead us in a word of prayer uh, for anybody that's watching that would just want yeah. to respond to that invitation, and we'll just pray together real quickly. Yeah, just open your heart to him. Father, 
You saw my tiredness. Yes. I know I'm so much away from your love. I have uh, done a lot of sin. I tell you, when you come to Christ, even drugs doesn't have power upon you. Pornography doesn't have power upon you. Any kind of sin, whatever you name it, and now tell him, Oh, Lord, I need your mercy to come, and I want you to wash me with your holy blood. We are in a very special season, and we are in a very special time. And this is the time that the Lord is preparing and calling his children back to him. He's preparing his church to be ready. Lord, enter my heart and change my souls yes. and change my ways and forgive me. And the Lord is always giving us second chance. Give us your hope and joy and peace. And right today, Lord, again, new names and even people, they let their face restore them for your glory. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we ask him. Amen. 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 Gosh, if you prayed along with Ehab, then I want to ask you to do something. You can call the number at the bottom of the screen, 423-477-0774, or you can email us at prayer at hosannafellowship.org. We want to get some materials into your hand that will help you in your journey with Jesus. So really am uh, excited about what God's doing in your life, and I appreciate Ehab sharing his story. And so as we continue from there, after you did that, after you said yes, what happened? What did God, what, what's God been doing in your life since then? My life has been totally changed. Loving the Lord, uh, really, I feel he's, he's my best friend. I talk with him, he's walking with me, and uh, we spend times in prayer. Prayer is something very beautiful. Prayer is not hard task, but prayer which I can share my heart, my dreams, and I hearing his voice. We spent time reading uh, the Bible, and I told, having one and a half year every day overnight prayer for, was n not stopping one night. Uh, then I keep studying in my university. My life has been a change. My attitude, my vision, my dreams, and I was trying to. I want to be a missionary. I wanted to do something for the kingdom of God. Was not having a lot of understanding about what is being a missionary. Missionary is to travel, to go to a new nation, to meet uh, new people you have never met before and just to talk to them about the love of Jesus or just loving them and try to be uh, a good witness of Jesus Christ. And uh, this dream started to grow in my heart. Hmm. So, so what has happened since you did that? Where have you been? So you've been a missionary. So what, what's, what, what ministry do you have now? I know you have a, a ministry. What's its name? How did it develop? And what have you been doing for the last, however many years has this been? Uh, it's a ministry for uh, seven years, but I was a uh, Go ministry. We started a ministry it's called Go uh -huh. to help different people going through a crisis. But uh, our journey started from Egypt when I was wanting to be a missionary and I start to pray and I start to listen more about uh, Dubai. I traveled after my university. I start to work in different companies. And uh, in that time, I was loving more the Lord, trying to be a good witness, uh, helping many people. Uh, I start to grow my business career. And uh, until a moment, I felt like I need to do something different. I studied theology. Okay. Then... Uh, I was in a special time taking retreat with the Lord. I was reading Isaiah 6. And uh, when Isaiah I saw a great vision of God, and he heard the voice of God, whom shall I send for us? And Isaiah he responded, hey, here I am, send me. During that time, I was hearing a lot about the news and how is ISIS enter Iraq, and they destroy mm. many people, and they hurt many people. They did terrible stuff. And I say, oh, God, how we are as a Christian be helpful for these people? And we start to pray and say, okay, Lord, tell me how we can help. And the Lord started to send people from our church to help in Iraq in this crisis time. And it was the starting of Go Ministry to go to different nations, helping people in different places. So literally seven years ago, but before that, you gave your heart to Christ and you really continued to be faithful in your studies and then also in business. What was your area of study? Were you, what, what area were you in? I finished uh, business uh, uh, and uh, commercial uh -huh. uh, ma uh, administra management, uh, I, I, and then I keep studying. Uh, I was working uh, in the port of Dubai. I did customs clearance online, so 
was part of from my job and I working in human resources department. I was re-engineering systems development for a company there. Yeah. And uh, I like uh, administration and finance and the management. All right. So, yeah, business administration. And, and yet he was serving Christ the entire time, giving his all for not only Jesus, but for his job and really looking for opportunities to serve the Lord in how he how he would conduct his business. But it was in that time when you saw the need and meditating on Isaiah chapter 6 became a very important reality, which is who will go for us. And uh, and so you started and you initially went into Iraq. Is that where you went to? I mean, from Dubai, did you go to Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, who was there uh, in Iraq after two months of this crisis, we prayed and the Lord just opened the door and was being able to help the many refugees, which people replaced inside Iraq. It was... It was a very difficult time, but we can see that uh, God is always caring about everyone. And sometimes even crisis is looking difficult. You may be going through hard time, but through the pain, the people, they started to cry out, what is the hope? What is the value of life? Even when you're getting so much uh, uh, involving with business or people so much having uh, income or money, even they reach to the point, what is the value and the meaning of life? So the uh, reality, we do have the answers because Jesus, he came and he gave his life for many and he said, I am the life, I am the truth. One of the most important things that the world is crying out, it's the truth, what is the truth? And we try to manipulating and changing a lot of things. We try to go out of the truth, but every time the human go beyond or uh, manipulating in the understanding of the truth of God, he's putting himself more into the world unsatisfaction he need deliverness he need freedom and he need to come back to the love of god to help him to discover the truth in jesus that's what we're talking about in this program that's really what we need to hear in our communities is what is truth there is an absolute truth there are absolute truths but there's also the absolute truth and the absolute truth is a person his name is jesus jesus christ is the savior of the world. The scripture tells us that he has a name that is above every other name. And it's at his name every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And the the scripture tells us in Acts chapter 4 that there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved than the name of Jesus. There's no other religion. there's There's no other philosophy. There's no other self-help course. It's the name of Jesus. Jesus is the one who saves. He brings meaning to life. Yeah, maybe, maybe I don't know if you can remember, but are there any kind of stories that would just stand out in your mind of where, when you were there helping people that were in refugee, uh, you know, they were actually fleeing the country because of ISIS. What were some of the things that God did while you were there? Actually, we do have uh, uh, many stories, and I will uh, try to share one or two if we have time. But one of the most things when we meeting many people from different religions in many different parts from the world, and if you ask them what is going to happen with you like after this, or what is, is going to happen to the human when he leaves this world, and no one he can answer this question. In any other religious, everyone he will tell you, we don't know what is going to happen. The only source and the only one his answer Jesus is <laughs> in the Bible was Jesus when he's wanted to answer us and say, I am the life and the, and the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this is one of the things that led the people like why we are living and what is next. You know, even the people, they believe in the eternal life, but they don't know how to reach to God. And this is the only way we proclaim it to all of our friends from different countries we're dealing that Jesus is the way, Jesus is the love, Jesus is the resurrection. It's to come to my mind, like we met uh, a young girl, her name is uh, Amina, she was like uh, 12 uh, years old. Uh, Isis, when they entered the village in Iraq, they take uh, the Yazidians' uh, woman uh, as slavery or captive, and they killed all the men. Mm-hmm. And through this, uh, they was forcing the children from like nine years old up to like 40 years old to get married. 
and sometimes they let them they want to, to marry the child this nine years old or 12 years old three times a day and if she's refused they broke her leg or arm and the, mm -hmm. they throw her amina she was able to make a hole from the place he was uh, leaving and the children they was able to go out one by one she was able to let six girls escape from uh, this uh, difficult time and when we met her amina she was like young <laughs> girl and we talked to her about the love of god and how god is giving hope and how he's giving joy and this girl is because of the love of christ because they find like there's other people they are really uh, giving unconditional help and they supporting and we when we go and we visit we didn't make any difference we help everyone regardless of his background or his re religious and this but I remember that the man he was responsible about them like the head of the tribe I say I say like the Christians they loved us we felt with them secure we felt with them peace their religious is the religious of peace when we dealing with Christian, we receive the peace and we receive the joy and we receive the hope. And they start to speak about Christ and we tell them because Jesus has gave his life to us. That's mm. why the, when we give it's not something, it's out of from his love. If someone has given his life, so what we are doing is nothing compared to Jesus' life. And we say that uh, this girl is being discipled, getting inner healing, playing music, having a good time equipped and we can see a Yazid, Yazidi in the church in these mm. days. Well, that's awesome. Well, in the midst of tragedy, Jesus, his love and truth really does transform lives. It really does transform culture too. That's powerful. So after, after Go got started, then you began to, which Go ETT, which is the ministry that uh, he, he, that Ehab leads, uh, you started conducting schools, I guess, or how many schools were you doing before the pandemic? We did like eight uh, schools, uh, was the mission schools to equip the body of Christ from all the Gulf region uh, to teach them the word of God and to let them how to share uh, the love of Christ with many people. So who is doing a lot of teaching and discipleship in this part of the world, which is, is the biggest need there. Mm -hmm. So would you say, I mean, just is the church of Jesus Christ growing in the Middle East? Jesus always is, has his witness, and the church will keep growing until the day he will come. Uh, for sure, there is a, Jesus is anywhere. He's attracting people. He's challenging people to read uh, about him the Bible or to open through the media or to asking questions and uh, we have a very beautiful uh, country we have a lot of uh, tolerance which we can speak and we can share well, they are very friendly uh, one of uh, we, we have a happiness minister, ministry in the united arab emirates we have tolerance ministry uh, we, we living a very good uh, season and uh, always uh, people they looking for someone real so they can ask what they how was he can help them and uh, get to know the truth. Yeah, and so since that time, you've actually moved back to your wife's homeland, uh, Switzerland, and yet the ministry didn't stop. In many ways, it's actually kind of amped up. Tell us a little bit about what you were doing before you moved back because you would go back to Switzerland to do outreaches mm -hmm. during the summertime. Mm -hmm. And now, what is it that you're doing now? So give us a little update on that. Since we start uh, Go Ministry, we started in the Gulf region. But uh, in w it was in our hearts to have like a headquarter in Switzerland because this is what the Lord has told us. So we registered the ministry in Switzerland and we would like to see it in Gulf region, we would like to see it in Africa, we would like to see it in Egypt would like to see it in different nations and since that time we keep running our ministry in this uh, Gulf region we do ministry in some Middle East countries and we do some ministry in some countries in Africa and uh, now we're doing ministry in Switzerland and what the Lord is doing is amazing um, we just finished in August uh, a prayer mountain we call it prayer mountain which people they could come to sit quiet to here preaching and teaching, spending time with the Lord and was having people who was addicted to marijuana and since they left this prayer mountain, they never came back to addiction. They get totally free from drugs. 
So this is the power of God. This is the power of Jesus. When he's sending someone free, he is truly free. Amen. So, I mean, Jesus setting people free from addiction, uh, marijuana, and other types of drugs. I mean, we, we testimony after testimony after testimony of the power of Christ to change the human heart. It's when we allow that truth to enter in and we allow his love to love us and we receive it. It's, you know, the scripture says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, for us to have eternal life uh, is not something that we, we work for or we try to acquire on our own. It's a free gift. It's something that we have to receive and we receive it by repenting of the way we've lived and the way we've thought, the way we think. And when we, ch- when we uh, change the way we think with the resultant change in the way we act, we say, Lord, we need you, and we receive that life. And this is what God's been doing through Ehab for so, so many years. And uh, I've, I've actually gotten to be with Ehab uh, in his home uh, in Dubai, and, and I'm looking forward to maybe coming to Switzerland yeah. at some point. But, but I know this, that it's, in, it's, it's an amazing thing what God has done. He is moving throughout the earth. And so when you hear news reports that say, nothing good is happening here, nothing good is happening there, I want you to know something, Jesus is at work. God is doing something that none of us can figure the amount of people they saw vision and the dreams and they are waiting the church to accept them for them they're unbelievable i met i can say ten of people or hundreds of people that they saw jesus in vision and the dreams and what is the great thing when you receive the truth and love i encourage you not to stop up to you i want to encourage you if you are christian you have a love for being in the mission field you have a love for the arabs or people from other nationality or this please do not hesitate to contact jeff jeff is one of the great men of god he's helped us f- through the years in the through the mission forward conference he's hosting here in the hosanna church or he's through networking or doing a mission you can have a question you can drop it to jeff <laughs> now i'm thinking <laughs> or you can ask how you could reach you to the nation we need to join the, our hand for the great harvest is coming i promise you that we are entering in a great harvest season is coming for the church even what is the world is going through and if you have even you would get to know more about the ministry what the lord is doing in this part of the world you can contact me or jeff or awesome. feel free we'll include his information right here on the front god bless you we want you to have a great day and we love you jesus we love loves you. you have a great day